second time talking about what makes something an electrolyte. An electrolyte is a solution that has what in it? Ions. That's it. So if your thing contains ions, or if it makes ions, then it's going to be an electrolyte. What types of compounds contain ions? Ionic compounds, right? Ionic compounds make ions. They contain ions. There's one other class of compounds. It doesn't contain ions, but it makes ions. Wim. Acids. Acids don't contain ions, but when you put them in water, they make ions. And we'll talk a little bit about that today. But uh, whatever, let's move on. Um, so we talked a little bit about solubility. Water is a polar molecule, so the positive and negative ends of water, they can attract the positive and negative uh, ions that are in some ionic compounds, that are in all ionic compounds. And then the last thing we talked about was this idea of when I take these ions apart, if I, if I wanted to take two ions and pull them apart, would that require energy? Would it take energy to do that? Yeah, it would. And so if I'm putting energy into something, right, if I'm storing energy in the system, then that means it's taking energy out of the temperature around its surroundings. This idea of ripping things apart, that's making things colder. When something, when a system absorbs energy, this is making things colder. And then when we form, when the water molecules, when they form new attractive bonds between the ions, <clears throat> that's, that's releasing energy. What's releasing energy going to do to its surroundings? It's going to make it warmer. And it's, it's the difference between breaking these bonds and forming new bonds that decides whether or not a reaction is endothermic or exothermic. In general, that's really the only thing that determines whether something is endothermic or exothermic. So if something was endothermic, if something absorbed energy or it made things colder, which of these two processes involved a greater energy change? The first process of breaking the bonds, or the second process of making new bonds? This one, if this is making things colder and this is making things warmer, but in the end, we ended up colder than we started with, this process must have won out over this process. 
So this process must have uh, involved a greater energy change than that process. And I want to I wanna kind of show you if that's okay. So I'm going to take some bags. What's this? This is just a Ziploc bag. What's inside of it? Water. Water. I'm, so Nina, I'm going to give both to you. And then do this quick. Holy. And then I'm going to give one to you. Don't spill it on your paper. And one to you. Don't spill it on your paper. There you go. What's going to happen is, is I'm going to do this at the front, and then you're going to pass it behind you. And then everybody, everybody's going to take like, you know, five seconds to feel the bags, okay? That's weird. It's weird to be saying that feel the bags or whatever. Nope, so just, just keep them for now, Nina. Just keep them. So would you agree this is like regular room temperature? Would you agree this is regular temperature water? It's not hot and it's not cold. What? It's that kind of cold? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. any any solid like when when you get when you get water out of the tap, it's going to be kind of cold, right? Are we okay with that? So in one bag, I'm going to put something, and then in the other bag. I'm gonna put something else. Oh, and I gotta chop it up. I didn't think about this. So what you have to do is you have to try and dissolve it in your bags, okay? So both bags, close them up. Once you have the solids, close them up and then try and dissolve the solids that are in there. It's not an acid and it's not a base. <laughs> and you get the other one. So the year gets one. Oh, sorry. Okay. So now. Now try and dissolve as much of it as you possibly can. Try and dissolve as much of it as possible can. Do you feel anything? Yes. Yeah, okay. So it's slightly warm. What? Try and get No. I'm gonna add it. Okay, so take your bags, compare the two, and then pass them back, please. Take the bags and compare the two and pass them back. What do you mean? You know, the ground became warmer. It used to be cold. It used to be cold. No, it feels exactly the same. Does that feel the exact same as that? No, this one, this one feels the same. Okay, pass them back. 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 There you go. Were they different temperatures at all? Yeah. Yeah? The one that, one that you had was really cold. Yeah, it was really cold. No, one was cold and one was a bit warmer. The other didn't get warmer. It felt the exact same. But we started out with cold water. Yeah. That's the problem. I tried, I left them out, or I left the water out for like an hour and I tried to get it. Okay, would you agree, would you agree one of those bags is colder than the other? Yes. Yeah, okay, all right. And so, what happened was, what happened was, in one of these situations, in one of those bags, you can just put them at the back, just put them wherever at the back, doesn't matter, okay, when you're done. In one of these situations, in one of these situations, it took way more energy to rip those ions apart than we got by forming new bonds with the water. So in one of these, this breaking of the bonds absorbed so much energy from the water, and then when it made new bonds with the water, it released a tiny little bit of energy. So it made it a little bit warmer, but it made it way colder than it made it warm. Does that make sense? It's the battle between these two processes that determines if something is endothermic or exothermic. That's, that's all I'm trying to say, okay?
That's all I'm trying to say. So, we're going to move on. You can just put the bags at the back. Just put them wherever. You can put them on the bench, or you can just do whatever you want. Okay? But don't drink them. Jeez. Don't drink them. So, when ionic compounds... When ionic compounds are added to water, the compound can make new bonds with water. This is the, the basis of solubility. If something is soluble in water, that means it forms stronger bonds with all of the water molecules than it does with itself. It's the attraction between the ions versus the attraction with the water. And so if it can be soluble, it'll break up and it'll turn into those ions. So we use our solubility chart, data book, page 6. I'd like you to break that out for me, please. The data book is on page 6. Um, page six. Yeah. Oh, that one. We've, got, we've already used this data booklet, right? Yeah. Or sorry, we've already used this solubility chart, so this shouldn't be that big of a deal. What I want you to do, do we need to do any practice together, or can I can I let you loose on these problems? Do you do we want to do one together? Let's do one of them, okay? Let's do one of them. Copper one chloride. We're not going to worry about uh, silver chloride. We're going to do copper one chloride. What does a copper one chloride compound look like? What's the formula for copper one chloride? C-U-C-L. Just C-U-C-L. It's copper one and chloride gives us copper one chloride. So what I want to know, is this thing going to have high solubility or low solubility? What do you want to start with? Do you want to start with the, the positive ion or the negative ion? The negative. Start with the negative. Always. So where, yeah, always, right? Where do we find the negative ion that we're dealing with? In the third column, right? So we see chloride, and we want to look, we want to try and find copper one, right? Do you find copper one? Yes. yes you find copper one. If we didn't find copper one, it would be under most, right? So copper one means it's slightly soluble. What the hell does that mean? It's mostly going to be a solid. A, still, a little bit of it will dissolve, but most of it will not dissolve. So we will write its state of matter as solid. That's what I want you to do. I want you to do this for all of these compounds. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. The only. Okay. So copper. So we're still looking for chloride. And Tommy, do you see copper two plus anywhere in this list? I don't see copper two plus anywhere in this list. So what does that mean? It's, it's under most, right? Most means copper 2 plus. And so it will be very soluble. So what should we write? We'll write aqueous or AQ for a state of matter. So we'll say, but you, you have to tell me the correct formula, right? What's the correct formula for copper 2 chloride? <laughs> copper copper two is Cu two plus, right? And chloride is one minus. So how many coppers and how many chlorides? Cu Cu Cl two aqueous. Did we not spend so many days on that at the beginning of the semester? Hell yes, we did. Yes, hell yes, we did. Go ahead and do these. Uh, that's a big side. Are you okay? Ammonium sulfate. I don't know what's ammonium and what's sulfate. Ammonium and where is sulfate? Mostly. That's not it. I don't know what you're talking about. Look. 
The biggest problem, I'm going to use a derogatory term to refer to some of us, okay? The, yeah, the biggest problem with this is that some of us are lazy. And, and I, like, for example, do you, has anybody memorized, don't tell me what it is, but yes or no, has anybody memorized what sulfate is? Okay, so if you, if you have memorized it, great. If you haven't, what are you going to do about that? You're going to look it up. Look it up in the table of polyatomic ions. Don't be lazy. Just look it up, right? See if that combination of things will make aqueous or solid. You don't have to. You just write if it's solid or anything. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. So let's try this. Uh, let's finish our right hand column and then we'll move on to the left hand column. Ammonium, what does ammonium look like? NH4 plus. And what does sulfate look like? SO4 2 minus. Okay? 
All right, let's look for SO42 minus. Do you see ammonium down here? No. No, so it's very soluble. So this is how many ammoniums and how many sulfates are we going to need? Two ammoniums. Am I going to write NH42? No. No, you have the brackets. Yeah, there's not 42 of them. So I'll write aqueous. Good. Barium hydroxide. What's. Uh, barium is BA2. Hydroxide is OH minus. Where is hydroxide? Is barium in here? Yes. No, yes. It is. No. Yes. yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, it's yes. two columns. It's no, it's group two. This is group one. This is group two, right? So barium is down here. Barium hydroxide will not be very soluble. I didn't tell you. So how many bariums and how many hydroxides? One barium. Um, takes too much time. Don't I what? I need brackets. Why, Jana? Because this is a polyatomic ion, right? Yep. And we need, anytime we have two or more of a polyatomic ion, we need brackets. Okay. AGCL. Did you find it? It's solid, right? So silver chloride is going to be solid. What about sodium what the hell is CH3COO? Acetate. Acetate, right? Yeah. But that's, but that's good. Acetate is in the first one. Do you see sodium acetate down here? I do see any, anything acetate down here. Yes, you can't see. Yeah, you see, you see silver acetate and you see this weird mercury acetate thing that you'll never see in your life, but... No, sodium's up here, so sodium is soluble, right? So this is going to be aqueous. Okay, the next one, what's the negative ion? Iodide, right? So let's find iodide. Iodide's here, do you see lead down there? Yes. But that's not there. Good. This is lead 2, right? Sorry. Yeah. This is lead 2 plus. But when I look at this, is this lead 2 plus? No. No, it's lead 4 plus. So lead 4 plus is soluble. Lead 2 plus is not soluble. Are we okay with that? Yeah, okay. And then ammonium phosphate. Yeah, when I look at phosphate up here, I see ammonium there, so very soluble. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay, hey, are we all right with that? Okay, we're going to move on to ionization and uh, dissociation equations. What does it mean? What does it mean when something is associated with something else? Yeah, you're together or you're related. Like, if I'm associated with somebody else, then that means that we have a certain relationship with each other. That's what that means, okay? Now, this calcium and this chloride, they're associated together, right? They're put together in a compound. But when we take these two things and when we add them to water, they will disassociate or they will dissociate. So this is what we call a dissociation equation. If I have calcium chloride, when I put it in water, the calcium ion... This calcium 2 plus ion. What's attached to this calcium 2 plus ion? Two chloride ions, right? A chloride ion here and a chloride ion there. When I put them in water, when I put calcium chloride in water, all of a sudden, the water starts forming bonds with these ions, and the ions start getting ripped apart from each other. So these ions, they'll get ripped apart from each other. How many calcium ions am I going to make when this thing splits up? One. one. I'm going to make one calcium ion. But how many chloride ions am I going to make? Two. I'm going to make two. So we have to say that calcium chloride, CaCl2, splits up. When we add it to water, 
it splits up to a calcium ion. When I say aqueous, I'm saying aqueous meaning it's surrounded by water, it's dissolved in water now. And then two chloride ions that are also dissolved in water. Some things to keep in mind. The number of atoms or ions has to be the same. We still need our two rules for any chemical reaction. Do you remember what those two rules for any chemical reaction are? Balance. <laughs> Balancing is a result of one of them, Idris. The conservation of mass. But we, there's another rule that we always have to abide by every single time. The conservation of charge. Energy is a good guess. But the conservation of charge. So let's see. Let's see if this obeys the law of conservation of mass. How many calciums on this side of the reaction? One. 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 How many over here? One. 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 It's got a two plus charge, but there's still only one of them, right? So one calcium, one calcium. Are we okay? How many chlorides? Two. Two and two. So this obeys the law of conservation of mass. It obeys our balancing rule that we have. Does it obey the law of conservation of charge? Let's look at the left side. What do all the charges on the left side add up to be? Do you see any charges here at all? Are there any charges written anywhere? No. No. So the total charge on this side is zero. When you add up all the charges over here, and I don't see any, so it's a total charge of zero. What about the total charge on the other side? Zero. I see a two plus, but I see two negatives. What does this add up to be? Zero. So does this obey our law of conservation of charge? Yes. Yes, it does. That's a really quick mental check for us to be able to identify um, what's going on. Uh, ignore this. So ignore that. Just don't even worry about it right now. Yeah, don't. Just ignore it. That's something I did a couple semesters ago, but I don't want to do so that's okay. So let's try this. Um, let's try some out and ignore also this, this remember to check the solubility table. Don't worry about that. We're just going to say they all, they all dissociate. So write the dissociation equations for the following compounds. What you need to keep in mind is what are the ions in here? When I look at NH4Cl, there's three things, right? Three elements, but there's only two ions. What are the two ions that are involved? It's not nitrogen, it's ammonium, right? So this is ammonium, and what else? And chloride. So how many ammoniums, how many NH4s do we have? We have one NH4. So this is going to dissociate into NH4 plus... And when, when the ammonium and the chloride split up, what are we going to get? We're going to get ammonium and... Okay, so this is where people get really confused, and I'm so glad you said that, Wim. If you didn't hear what he said, he said, should Cl be Cl2 because of Hofbrinkel? And my question for you is, Wim, is, this, is the chloride that we're getting out of here, or the chlorine that we're getting out of here, is it an elemental atom? Is it an atom with no charge at all? It's an ion. And we can have ions with charges all by themselves. That's totally fine. So remember what's going on here is we have an NH4 plus ion. And attached to it, right, attracted to it is a chloride ion. So when we put this in water, what's going to split? The ammonium is going to split from the chloride. So we get ammonium aqueous plus chloride aqueous.
Do, does this obey the law of conservation of mass? Do we have the same number of nitrogens and hydrogens and chlorides and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Does it obey the law of conservation of charge? Mm -hmm. We've got a zero, plus, a zero a charge of zero over here and a positive and a negative, so that adds up to zero. What about calcium nitrate? We can draw another picture here if we want. This is a calcium 2 plus ion. And what's attached to that calcium 2 plus ion? 2 nitrate ions. So what happens is when the calcium breaks away from the nitrates, how many calcium ions are we going to make? We're going to make one calcium ion, right? A single calcium ion. And how many nitrates are we going to make? Oh. We're going to make two. Two NO3 minus ions. Any questions about that? No. This isn't, it's, it's, it's not super complicated. You just have to do a little bit of practice. That's all you have to do. Let's immediately just pay attention to the very next one. What is CO? Cobalt. Cobalt. And what is IO3? That's iodate. What is the charge on one of those two things? Do you know the charge on either of those things? No. Cobalt's multivalent, and that's the problem, right? You don't know the charge on cobalt, but you do know the charge on iodate. So what's the charge on one iodate? Negative one. So what, how many iodates are we going to make? Two. We're going to make two iodates. So what do you know, what do you think has to be the charge on the one cobalt? has to be 2 plus. It has to be. Why does it have to be 2 plus? Because all the charges have to add up to be 0, right? If we have two negatives, we have to have two positives. And that there's only one of them, so it has to be 2 positive. That's what I'd like you to do. There's four more here. I want you to split these up into their ions. If you finish these questions, you can go um, to the next page and on the next page of this practice. But that's only if you finish these four questions I want you to answer. Beside it. That represents two. It represents two totally independent sodium ions. Okay. Okay? So let's that's a really good question. In this in the calcium nitrate example here, okay? The calcium, it can float around in the water totally independent of the nitrates. 
But each each nitrate, Akua, each nitrate is independent of each other as well. So this nitrate can float around, and this nitrate can float around as well. Are they stuck together? Are the nitrates, the two nitrates, stuck together? No. If they were stuck together, then we might write, um, you know, N2O6 or something like that. But because they're independent. So in here, these two sodium ions, what's the charge on one sodium ion? That's one. It's one positive, right? Yeah. So we're going to make two totally independent sodium ions. I'm seeing a, a lot of people writing the, uh, the wrong charges. Now, where's the best place to figure out what the charge is on an ion? Data book. The, the data booklet, the periodic table. If you, don't, if you don't have all of the charges of all 118 elements memorized, right? Which is ludicrous. You should never have them all memorized, okay? You just go to the data booklet and figure it out. What is the charge? What are the two ions? First of all, what are the two ions here? Sodium. A sodium and a carbonate. 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 What's the charge on? Is it is it an ionic compound? Yes. Yeah, it's a metal, a metal, a metal, a metal, right? So all of these are ionic compounds. They're made out of ions. What's the charge on a sodium ion? One plus. That's, that's as much work as you need to do. You just need to say that sodium plus, and what's carbonate? What's the charge on a carbonate? Negative two. Negative two, so you, you say CO3, two minus. And then we add in states of matter, and then we add in how many of each are there. So they're all dissolved in water, that's the whole point, right? When we add this solid into water, the ions split up, so they're all dissolved into water. Now I'm going to balance it. Now I'm going to write how many of each there are. How many sodiums are in the compound? So we make two of them. How many carbonates are in the compound? One. So we make one of them. Right? That's all you have to do. If, if you don't know the charge, look it up. The only problem you will ever run into is if the charges are multivalent, right? 
If that element is multivalent, that's when you have to do a little bit of thinking and you have to figure out which charge it is, okay? So I, I'm going to do the next three, and then I want you to do these. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to practice later. Okay, what are the two ions in AgCl? Silver and chloride, right? There's a difference between chlorine and chloride. So we're going to make a silver, and we're going to make a chloride. What's the charge on a silver? It's plus one, and what's the charge on a chloride? And a one, so aqueous, aqueous. And how many silvers are there? One. One, we're good. How many chlorides are there? One, we're good. Woo, okay, good to go. Next one, what are the two ions, and there's only ever two ions, right? What are the two ions in this thing? Potassium. Potassium. And what? And phosphate. Now, what's the charge on a single potassium? What's the charge on a single potassium? One. How? Where do you get that information from? Yeah, the data booklet. Potassium is one plus. So what's the charge on a phosphate? Three. A single phosphate is three minus. They're all aqueous. Now, how many phosphates are here? One. One. How many potassiums are here? So we make three potassiums for every one phosphate. And then, well, what the hell is this? What's going on? Potassium and OH. What the hell is OH? Hydroxide. So we're going to make a potassium and we're going to make a hydroxide. Now, what are the charges on these potassiums and these hydroxides? Positive one and minus one, and they're all aqueous. How many potassiums? One. How many hydroxides? One. All right. No problem. All right. Trust me when I say I will give you more time to do those questions, these questions, a little bit later. But I just want to get to ionization uh, reactions first. Okay, ionization equations are the exact same thing as dissociation equations, but they don't involve, they don't involve ionic compounds. Instead of ionic compounds, they involve acids. Ionization equations are acids. Now, the exact same thing is going to happen, except in HCl, when I look at HCl, there are no ions. Is this a metal and a non-metal together? No. No. Because hydrogen, I get hydrogen is over here. I get it's to the left of the staircase. But what's our rule with hydrogen? It doesn't, it doesn't follow any of the rules of the periodic table, right? I get that it's to the left, but it's not a metal. When's the last time you saw a solid chunk of hydrogen? Never. It doesn't happen, right? So this is not a metal, non-metal. There are no ions in here. There are no ions whatsoever. This is a hydrogen bonded to a chlorine. But what happens is that when we add this thing to water, water has such a strong attraction to the hydrogen. It's got such a strong attack attraction to the hydrogen that the water molecule rips the hydrogen off of the hydrogen chloride. So it goes from, do you see any ions in here? Are there any charges? I don't, see any, I don't see any charges here. But it becomes ionized. Ionization is the process of making ions where there were none to begin with. So this is not ionic. There are no ions in here. But it becomes ionic. Do you see the similarities between a dissociation equation, a dissociation equation, and an ionization equation? Yeah. 
It's basically the same thing, except instead of, start, instead of starting with an ionic compound, we're starting with an acid. So the only rule, the only rule for ionization equations is that when we add an acid into water, a single hydrogen is ionized away from it. A single hydrogen is ionized. Um, okay, uh, and then let's kind of ignore this, okay? It's the same thing as a, the, I don't want to talk about that right now. Let's, let's not worry about it right now. So let's do uh, a couple examples to ignore strong acids and weak acids. We'll talk about that later. Just, just ignore it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So let's write the ionization reactions for some of these acids. HNO3, this is, how, this is what you're going to do. You're going to look at your data booklet, and you're going to look in the table of acids and bases. The table of acids and bases is page 8 and 9. I would like you to look at the table of acids and bases, please. Okay, where do you see HNO3 in here? HNO3 is called nitric acid or aqueous hydrogen nitrate. Can you see how it would be called aqueous hydrogen nitrate? Okay, the reason why it's named that way is because when aqueous hydrogen nitrate ionizes, what is it going to make? Hydrogen and nitrate. It's, that's what it's going to make. That's the idea. So let's use our table to figure out what it's going to make. When I put HNO3 in water, when I dissolve it in water, it will ionize to make... It, it doesn't show you the hydrogen, but it will always make one hydrogen ion and slide your finger over, what else is it going to make? NO3 minus. Whatever, slide, you just, slide your finger over, whatever the hell that thing is, that's what it makes <coughs> along with one hydrogen ion. So HNO3, what's it going to make? One hydrogen ion and what? I don't know, how many NO3s do you see in here? One. One, so NO3 minus aqueous. It makes a single hydrogen ion and whatever you slide your finger over, it's called the slidey finger rule, okay? Whatever you slide your finger over to C in the other column. Um, let's take CH3, COOH. Do you remember what makes an acid an acid? It's either the H at the beginning or the COOH. So which one of these H's is going to leave? The end. The end one. Let's double check. Let's look for CH3, COOH in your data book. Acetic acid. Called acetic acid. And we, when we start with CH3COOH, the last H leaves, right? And what do we turn into? CH3COO. Well, what, what the hell is that thing? That's an acetate ion. That's why we call it acetic acid. It's an acetate ion. So, what's going to come off of here? A hydrogen ion. A single hydrogen ion. And what else? CH3 COO minus. I'm curious. When we when the hydrogen ion leaves this thing, when the hydrogen ion leaves, why do we end up with a negative something? Do you know? What are all the charges over here adding up to be? Zero. So what do all the charges over here add up to be? Zero. So if we have an H+, plus, we have to make something <laughs> negative as well. Because it was neutral to begin with, if a positive splits off of something, it makes a negative. Do you want to do, do you have it, do you want to do any others, or do you want to... One more, one more, one more, right? One more, one more. 
Zero. One more. Zero more? Yeah. One more. <laughs> Let's do H2SO4. What are we going to make? When this splits up, what are we going to make? How many hydrogens? Two. 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 One. Two. Two. One. One. No. Two. Is it always one? It's always one. Also, Idris. Let's use the slidey finger rule. Where's H2SO4? What the hell is the name for H2SO4? <laughs> sulfuric acid. It's not sulfurous acid. It's sulfuric acid. Okay? So sulfuric acid is H2SO4. Let's use the slidey finger rule. What's it going to make? HSO4. So how many hydrogens left? A single... Uno, momento, por favor, okay? Oh. I know that's not anything, but whatever. Okay, a single hydrogen left. <laughs> ionization reactions, ionization equations are way easier than dissociation equations because you don't even have to really think about it. A single H leaves, and you're left with whatever the hell you're left with, using our slidey finger rule. And we'll, we'll deal with acids in more detail later on. When. So. What? Wim, everybody else should hear us right now, but Wim, I agree with you. This is still technically an acid, and we'll talk. No, we'll talk about it later, okay? For right now, when what happens when we've got H two S O four and one? A single H leaves, and we're left with H S O four, and we will deal with that thing later. Good. What? This thing. This thing begins with what? So this thing is still technically an acid, but when you put this in water, okay. We'll talk about it later. No, I don't even want to talk about it. Is it that easy? Can I make them all that easy? No, Aren't you? Make them all of them. <laughs> yeah. No, just these. Like, just these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Akua, wouldn't you be happy? Akua, wouldn't you be happy if two of the written questions were this on the test? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get it until I did the wink? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So what's HBR going to turn into? Does this obey our two laws? Yeah, it obeys the law of conservation of mass, 1H, 1H, 1BR, 1BR. Does it obey the law of conservation of charge? I don't know. You tell me. What does the law of conservation of charge mean? The, whatever charges you have on the left side, whenever they add up, they should equal the, the total on the right side. So let's say if I had a total of negative 1 over here, I should have a total of negative 1 over here. But I don't. I have a total of what over here? Zero. Zero. And I have a total of what over here? Zero. Zero. So that's good, right? HS, H2SO3, what's going to happen? H plus aqueous plus HSO3 minus aqueous. Hey, where's the most common place where people are, where, where people might screw up here? Where's the most common place? Uh, I would say maybe they make two hydrogens, which would be incorrect, right? We never make two hydrogens, we only make one, okay? What's actually the most common mistake? Forgetting a charge. Easily, by far, the most common mistake. You write on the, on the next one, right? HF makes H and F. Any of they? No, oh, yeah, no problem. Got it. Good to go. What's wrong with that? That's not a hydrogen ion. There is a world of difference between a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen ion. 
This is what makes things acidic, not hydrogen atoms, right? Are we okay with that? Yeah? Okay. So I've got some practice that I want you to do. Whoopsie daisy. I've got some practice that I want you to do. Now, I want you to do these questions, which should be really easy, right? And then I want you to do those questions, which should be really easy. And then, and then I'm going to talk. About, and then I'm going to talk about the difference between weak and strong acids, and that's going to be an uncomfortable conversation. But that's one. When is your unit test? Oh, that's right. I'm going to show you that here in a second. You have questions. Uh, I don't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is this is ammonium, and then this is hydrogen phosphate. So the ammonium is from the hydrogen So this is really, 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 I know, I know you're not doing an ionizing reaction, but what's the most common thing that you do? Just talk about it. Oh, exactly. It's hard. What's the most saying if it's an ionic compound, those ions just dissociate from each other. This is our major assignment. <laughs> Okay, uh, sorry, I, I really apologize, I hate to interrupt you while you're working, but <laughs> that's not a good sign of this. I just handed out something called the major, the chemistry 20, the major assignment for our solutions unit, okay? Now, I'm going to look up, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'm going to look up when I'm, we're planning on having our exam. I think it's three Fridays from now. <laughs> just give me a second. Yeah, there's two over there and one over there. Okay. This assignment, geez, what's the date today? This, uh, the date is the 7th, right? Or the 8th or something? Today's the 9th. Holy guacamole, okay. Okay, this assignment is not due until October 24th. Yes. This assignment is not due, so it's not due tomorrow, which is Thursday, it's not even due next Thursday, it's not even due like the Thursday after that. This is like three Thursdays from now. Okay, so October 24th is when this is due. I will put it in uh, Google Classroom and I will put the due date. Your exam is tentatively planned for the 25th, yes.
When I look at question number two, this is in the dissociation part. We're going to do a couple of these, if, if that's okay. So pay attention, please, and compare. Even if you have a test in the next period, pay attention and just make sure your answers are the same as my answers. So I'm going to look at aluminum sulfate. What did I say? What was the most important thing that we talked about at the very beginning of the semester? Was it more important to go from a formula to a name or a name to a formula? Formula to a name. A name to a formula. That was way more important. Do you know what aluminium sulfate looks like as a formula? Al. It's got it's got Al, but Al is a three plus ion, right? And sulfate is a what? SO2. A two negative. So how many ALs and how many SO4s do we need? Three. We need two ALs and we need three SO4s. Okay. Please, please, please. Everything should have a state of matter from now on. From now on, everything should have a state of matter. There's no excuses. Aluminum sulfate is an ionic compound, so it's solid. Then when we dissolve it in water, what's going to happen? The aluminum ions and the sulfate ions are going to split away from each other, right? So how many aluminums and how many sulfates are we going to get? Two, two, two aluminums and three of those, and we just say AQAQ. 
does this right hand side, does the whole side add up to be a total charge of zero? Positive six and negative six add up to be zero, so we're good. Now this next one, F, ammonium hydrogen phosphate. So far, I've been okay because everything's only ever had two things in it, right? But shh, does ammonium hydrogen phosphate have two ions or three ions in it? Right here, aluminum and sulfate, that's got two ions in it, an aluminum ion and a sulfate ion. What about ammonium hydrogen phosphate? It's still two. We have to make sure we understand there's only ever two ions in an ionic compound. What's the first ion you see? Ammonium, and ammonium is one plus, right? Yeah. Well, what the hell is hydrogen phosphate? It's HPO4, and what's the charge on it? Two minus. So how many ammoniums and how many hydrogen phosphates do we need? How do I write, how do I write, you need, I mean you need two ammoniums, right? For every one hydrogen phosphate. So how do I write that I have two ammoniums? And then, then I'll add in the single hydrogen phosphate, solid. When this thing breaks up, what's it going to turn into? Ammonium and hydrogen phosphate. It's going to break up into ammonium and hydrogen phosphate. What's the formula for, what's the charge on a single ammonium? Plus one, what's the charge on a single hydrogen phosphate? Two minus, and how many ammoniums do we make? Two of them. Two, and we make one hydrogen phosphate. And then we just say aqueous and aqueous. We will get more practice at this tomorrow.